Welcome back to the RipeWave Audio Community, where we explore together all types of home audio systems from hi-fi to home theater. My name is John, and for this video, we will continue our top AV processor separates under $5,000 series, which supports immersive audio formats for at least 12 channels. For part two, we are focusing on the DACs, which these processors use. If you missed part one, where we outlined the main criteria for channels, format support, and room calibration, I have provided the link for your convenience in the description. For those that viewed part one, you are aware that we are researching AV processors so RipeWave Audio can make a more educated decision when we replace our 5.1 channel Sony TAE 9000 ES processor with a new immersive processor. As before, keep in mind that your criteria may be different than ours, but use this content to help you make your own choices. The list of processors we are examining is a filtered down set from 144 models, 26 brands, which are within the RipeWave Audio database. By setting the criteria for models under $5,000, immersive, separates, which are non-receivers, non-discontinued units, the pool of candidates dropped to 13 models from nine brands, Anthem, Arcam, Emotiva, Lexicon, Marantz, Macintosh, Monoprice, Rotel, and Yamaha. While we made some initial picks, just based on channel count, format support, and aesthetics in part one, we realize there are more details to explore before making our final conclusion. A digital to audio converter, or DAC for short, is an important part of an AV processor. All of today's video and multi-channel audio formats come to the AV processor as digital signals, which need to be converted to analog before they can be amplified for speaker output. The resolution and quality of the DAC can have a noticeable sonic impact. If you are using active speakers that take a digital input, there is an internal DAC. However, the only AV processors that support digital output for use with active speakers are outside our $5,000 limit. While external DACs are common, they serve the two-channel market. Therefore, if you are seeking a high-quality DAC for immersive audio, you will need to ensure your AV processor has DACs that live up to your requirements. Bit depth is the number of bits in each sample. Theoretical signal-to-noise ratios are calculated to be 96 dBs for 16 bits, 144 dBs for 24 bit, and 192 dBs for 32 bits. However, in practice, the actual capabilities of a DAC are generally lower. The best DACs we look at for this review are 32-bit and provide a maximum of 140 dB signal-to-noise ratio at best. Therefore, it is best to focus on signal-to-noise ratio and distortion specifications. While it is our first instinct to select the best of any component based on specification, it is ultimately will come down to how the DAC sounds. Some DACs look superior on paper, but may sound harsh or aggressive. You should also keep in mind that while the DAC chip influences the sound, the whole signal path determines the final sound quality that you hear. As such, it is possible to have two models using the same DAC chip sound different implementations can vary. When companies build an AV processor, they will select a DAC that can more closely represent the sound signature of their brand. It is often reported that AKM DACs sound warmer than ESS DACs. Therefore, it makes sense that Marantz, which tends to be on the warmer side, has chosen an AKM DAC over ESS. Of course, the design of the processor itself 
can further shape the sound with its DSP and internal circuits. A processor output channel can be designed as single-ended or differential. In the case of differential, two of the DAC chip's channels are used for a single speaker output. Differential circuits are used to remove noise from the signal, but double the number of DAC chips used in the design, and therefore add cost to the product. As such, differential processor designs are not common at this price point. Most digital signals a processor receives are pulse code modulated, PCM signals. Blu-ray signals are 24-bit with 96 kilohertz sampling rate. Blu-ray Pure Audio can be 24-bit 96 kilohertz or 24-bit 192 kilohertz. For those that have acquired high-res audio files, PCM encoding can be 192 kilohertz or higher. It is those advanced enthusiasts that may insist on support for higher sampling rates. Direct Stream Digital DSD content use pulse, pulse density modulation and is the technology used on Super Audio Compact Discs, SACDs. The sampling rate of standard DSD is 2.8 megahertz versus 41.4 kilohertz of compact discs. Now other DSD rates are, uh, of course we mentioned the DSD 64 at 2.8 megahertz, which is 64 times a compact disc. Then there is DSD-128, which is 5.6 megahertz, or 128 times that of a CD. DSD-256 at 11.2 megahertz, 256 times a CD. DSD-512, 22.6 megahertz, at 512 times a CD. And finally, DSD-1024 at 45.2 megahertz, or 1,024 1, times its CD. One benefit of DSD is the reduction in noise floor. As the DSD sampling rate is increased, the no noise floor is decreased. Another benefit is a wider dynamic range, whereas CD has 90 dB uh, limitation, or 96 theoretical, super audio CDs have a dynamic range of 120 uh, dBs within the 20 to 20,000 kilohertz frequencies. Super audio C CDs also have a theoretical dynamic uh, range past the audible range extending up to 100 kilohertz but is lower in implementation. There is great debate over what point improvements in bit depth and sampling rates um, become no longer audible. For many, 24-bit 96 kilohertz PCM is good enough. However, it is nice to know you have an AV processor which will be able to natively handle whatever signal uh, you want to give it without loss. At this point, we have been able to confirm the DACs used by each model except for the Macintosh MX100. This is a detail that some brands are now including in their marketing material as a selling point. In those cases, it was easy to find, but for the remainder we had to do some hunting. Within this group of AV processors, we find four DAC chip brands being used. Asashi Kasai, AKM, ESS with their Sabre range, Cirrus Logic and Cirrus Logic's Wolfson brand which they acquired in 2014. Eight of the 13 models are AKM based. Two models use ESS Sabre decks. Two models use Wolfson and one model employs Cirrus Logic. If you have a preference for a particular DAC sound, you may be able to find your favorite given the diversity we have here. Please note that the specifications on our chart represent the capability of the DAC chip and not the AV processor. The processor will often have lower values due to limits and how uh, limits their implementation imposes. 
Each DAC chip listed here supports two, four, or eight channels. In order to achieve the immersive channel count of the AV processor, multiple chips are required. The AKM 4490 EQ chip is the most popular. However, Emotiva's implementation stands out from that of Marantz, Monoprice, and Anthem, as the Emotiva models are the only ones that are fully differential. The RMC1 and RMC1L have a dedicated AK 4490EQ chip for each output for a total of 16 chips. Their XMC2 is only fully deferential for the front three speakers, lowering the count to 10, but still more than any other brand. RCAM and Yamaha both use ESS Sabre ES9025 Pro chips, which has the most impressive specifications of the lot, with a signal-to-noise ratio of 140 dBs and a total harmonic distortion of minus 122 dBs. Also, PCM support for 768 kHz and DSD support for DSD 1024 at 45.2 45 MHz. With that said, we will show you later that actual values of each processor as implemented don't reach these levels, but um, are more than sufficient for most needs. The Wolfson and Cirrus Logic uh, chips appear to be the least impressive as 24-bit versus the others at 32-bit. The Wolfson WM8740 and the Cirrus Logic CS42528 chips, however, may be more than sufficient for 24-bit 192 kilohertz playback. Unless you are an ultra high-res high user, you should be okay for your conversion needs. The Marantz AV7706 has a slightly lower grade AKM chip than that used in the AV8805. The AK4458 drops the signal to noise from 123 decibels down to 115 decibels. The AK4458 also limits conversion to 192 kilohertz PCM versus the 168 kHz PCM support found with the AKM 4490EQ. While over our $5,000 limit, the Anthem AVM90 is listed here for comparison, and it does have a better DAC than Anthem's own AVM70. The AVM90 uses the AK 4499EQ chip, which competes with the ESS base models, with the same 140 decibel signal to noise ratio and slightly better total harmonic distortion at a negative 124 decibels. Reorganizing by DAX uh, the table from best to worst specifications, we can more clearly see the feature set uh, and the AV processors which leverage them. The more expensive processors tend to use better DACs, but the Yamaha CXA5200 is the $2,700 exception that uses the top tier ESS9026 Pro DAC. The images of each chip reveal how modern their design is. Shown here is the AKM4493 EQ, which is used in the nearly $8,000 Anthem AVM90, with considerably more pinouts um, to the circuit board than the others. The Wolfson WM8740 has the oldest pinout style and the least number of pins. Going back to our by processor table, uh, we now look at what the processors actually output using this chip. For these values, we were sure to capture the specifications reported for the digital section of each processor, not the analog. Despite many models using the same AKM4490EQ chip, 
we see a wide variance in their values. Emotiva reports the best signal-to-noise ratio, regardless of chip, of 123 decibels, and we believe that can be attributed to the differential design not used by the others. It is surprising to see that the Arcam AV40 is coming in at one of the lower specifications, 100 dB signal-to-noise, despite the advantages its ESS chip offers. Yamaha does much better at 112 dBs using the same chip. Yamaha also outspecs the others with format support up to 384 kHz PCM conversion versus 192 kHz and native handling of DSD 256 at 11.2 MHz. Note that the ESS chip can support up to DSD 1024, but Yamaha decided not to implement at that level. DSD is not widely supported at all. Most manuals and marketing material don't claim support. Now, if it's not in the manuals or on their website, it does make it difficult for us to really know. Uh, now, we do have to make the assumption if they're not talking about it, chances are they don't support it. So that's the general assumption. The only other models supporting DSD are from Emotiva and Marantz. Their model support is limited to DSD-128 at 5.6 MHz. Total harmonic distortion is fairly consistent across all models, so we won't need to put that as part of our criteria. There are some holes in the table as not all brands report their format handling or THD values. Anthem has yet to release specifications for their newly announced yet to ship models. So we are showing the values from the AVM60 are set to replace. Now we assume that the AVM70 and 90 will have some improvements. This table nevertheless reveals that it is important to go by the AV processor data and not by the chip values alone. What did we learn? I think the main point is not to fully judge an AV processor by the specifications of a DAC. Audio companies are going to select a DAC that aligns with their sound signature they are trying to achieve. For example, on the Emotiva Lounge Forum, one of their employees notes that the AKM DAC was chosen over the others because to them it sounded the best. We take that it matched the sound they were aiming to achieve. We believe each brand goes through a similar exercise for their AV separates. As premium offerings, these units are not all about finding the cheapest solution. The best guidance we can provide is to know which formats you want to support and know which models will support those formats before you buy. If you want multi-channel DSD support, which includes support for Super Audio CD decoding, then you will be limited to Emotiva, Marantz, and Yamaha models. If you want to decode higher than 192 kilohertz files, there is the Yamaha, which goes a step higher at 394 kilohertz. Otherwise, you may need to add an external DAC for higher resolution, but be content with a two-channel playback limitation. For ripe wave audio, we like multi-channel DSD Super Audio CDs, despite its limited content availability. However, we don't feel the need to go beyond 192 kilohertz PCM or DSD-128. As for the signature sound, we tend to favor warmth over precision, with AKM considered to be warmer than the others. We may be better with Emotiva, Marantz, uh, uh, versus Yamaha's that uses ESS. Anthem may also be a contender, but we will wait until they release more details. For now, round two gets the nod to Marantz, Yamaha, and Emotiva brands, 
but Emotiva, with its differential DAC implementation and high specifications, is the clear winner from the feature standpoint. If you are in the market for an AV processor, do you also look at the DAC as part of your decision process? Please include in the comments section, will a fully differential processor make a noticeable difference or are we placing too high a value on that feature? That feedback would be useful to the RipeWave Audio community. Furthermore, if you enjoyed this video and are interested in enhancing your audio experience, please like and subscribe to this RipeWave Audio community and be sure to select the bell icon so you will be notified as soon as the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.